The most complicated in-depth melee spec is dominating the charts in Nihilotha and Mythic Plus while you're just sitting there trying to learn survival hunters and unholy decays. I'm telling you man, Havoc is power and with this guy you'll learn everything about talents, traits, weapons, corruption, rotation and a lot more so you can dominate dungeons and raids. Since we are going with the full demonic appetite build here, just know that you will be using these talents in all PvE aspects of the game, raids, dungeons and horrific vision. First on the row is demonic appetite, what a shock! This will give your chaos strikes a small chance to drop small purple balls on the ground, like these, which you have to get close to in order to receive 30 fury. It adds to the fluidity of the spec even making sure you don't get fury starved too often. Second row, you want Immolation Aura, which will be an extra button to your kit, providing instant and overtime cleave damage on top of generating 80 fury for you over 10 seconds. It goes hand in hand with Demonic Appetite, adding to your fury generation even more because you will use Immolation Aura on cooldown. Third row brings you the world-renowned Trail of Ruin, which will act as a passive dot, essentially providing your last slash of blade dance a good chunk of damage over 4 seconds. This talent has great synergy with a specific Azerite trait and another talent which we shall cover down the road. So don't go anywhere. On the fourth row, Soul Rending is your default option because of the leech. 10% extra leech by default and 10% extra leech in your metamorphosis. All this leech will make your healers fall in love with you. And although Netherwalk is the safest pick, you'd still want to go with Soul Rending just because as a DH your mobility is ridiculous, so in 99% of the cases you'll easily avoid all nasty mechanics just by fell rushing, double jumping or vengeful retreating your ass away. Moving on to the next tier, here you want First Blood as the only viable option. This is the talent that I talked about earlier that works great with Trail of Ruin, as it will lower the cost of Blade Dance and deal an extra amount of damage to the first enemy hit, making your main AoE spell a very potent single target spell also. What's not to love about it? The other choices are not worth it at this point, especially for the Demonic Appetite build. Sixth row brings you some CC options with Unleash Power being your go-to pick in general. This will remove the cost for your Chaos Nova and reduce its cooldown, also adding even more to your fluidity on Fury spending. Feller option can also work in certain dungeons as it provides on-demand stun with a very low cooldown while Master of the Glaive can really be pawned during Necrotic Weeks, granting your Throw Glaive a 50% slow and another charge of it. Making this build full circle, the last row you will pick Demonic, as this will trigger your eye beam to provide you with an 8 second metamorphosis, increasing all your damage and leech and more damage and more leech and man I'm telling you, Havoc DH is fun, easy and powerful. Talking about stats, you really need to sim yourself above any advice you get from anyone just because this is how BFA is being played, but hey, if you cannot be bothered, here is a general breakdown on the stat priority based on the latest logs. So agility comes first, but you already knew that, so let's take a look at what you're really here for, the secondary stats. Well, hold on to your seat because versatility and crit are almost equal in value for Havoc and still the main priorities you should be aware of with haste being super covered by a couple of traits. Don't worry, we will get to those in a minute. Mastery isn't something you should go for and be wary of some corruption effects that grant you mastery. You should totally cleanse those and enjoy the stick. The stat stick you perverts. Now, the consumables should be bought in conjunction with your sim stats, okay? But if you didn't sim, no worries, just go with a Court of Versatility for Rings and a Leviathan's Eye of Agility and Versatile Dark Opal for Sockets. Clear to see here we are complementing the stat priority we talked about earlier. Do take note that a Court of Crit or Crit Gems can be just as good or even better in some cases, so again, simming would help clear the air on that. Your weapons should follow the same route with a deadly navigation enchant for your main hand and a versatile navigation for your offhand, providing you with those juicy crit and versatility procs in the middle of a fight so you can retain your position as melee king. 
your flask will always be greater flask of the currents with potions varying between unbridled fury for single target and empowered proximity for aoe but yo if this is too complicated just go with superior battle potion of agility for all types of fights and you'll be okay just saying if you want a bit of an edge you know what potions to get now when your mom girlfriend or wife or all three are calling for dinner time then you know feast will always bring a smile to your tummy and if not you can always settle for some biltong for that versatility craving you cry so much about all right time for the traits and essences and trinkets and all that jazz but first let's go over the traits now for the demonic build there is kind of a standard you have to follow and the traits we cover here will work in raids dungeons and horrific visions too first one being furious gaze which you need stacked three times as it will load you with all the haste in the world after you finish an eye beam thus why haste will never seem as a priority for you ever this one is crucial for the build so no slacking when it comes to it okay Eyes of Rage is also a mandatory one with this build as it will help lower the cooldown of Eye Beam by 0.57 seconds for each soul fragment. You know, the purpley, purpley haste ball you collect so it goes without saying it complements the whole demonic build exquisitely. It also adds some extra damage to your Eye Beam which is always nice. Another trait you need is Chaotic Transformation. Why? Because I said so, that's why. No, 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 no. Actually, this is good because it will reset the cooldown of your eye beam after you land your metamorphosis, granting you two uses of beam plus meta and totaling you more than 40 seconds of metamorphosis. So, yeah, you see now? A couple of notes here. The new trait, Heart of Darkness, is simming well, so it may be an option if you are missing some of the above. Also, for dungeons, you can sacrifice one Furious Gaze and go for one Revolving Blades. I mean, the difference in numbers between one revolving blades and two furious gaze versus three furious gaze and is not that high. Now, when talking essences for raids, you still want condensed life force as your major, as this is by far the biggest single target damage you can dish out from all the options available, with miners being filled with Breath of the Dying for the corruption resistance and passive damage, conflict and strife for the versatility, and crucible of flame for even more passive damage. Worldway Resonance is also a strong pick for the miner, but only if three or more folks are using it also in your party. For Mythic Plus, your major should be the Mean Beam, aka the Focusing Iris, because it's the same one that killed Nuzat, so how can you go wrong with that? No, but seriously, this provides a huge chunk of AoE damage and it will make your tanks hate you, because it will make it hard for them to maintain aggro on all the mobs. Miners follow the same path as in raiding more or less, with a big mention to purification protocol as this will do a lot of damage for AoE and it will also be a huge damage boost in horrific visions as of there all, all, all enemies are operations. Alright, trinkets time! Single target will have you run the same exact best trinkets for Havoc up until Shadowlands probably. Ashvin, Razor Coral and Dribbling Inkpot, the best duo since Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez, will net you the most damage as Razor Coral is a 24-hour crit machine and Dribbling Inkpot is the closest thing you get to an execute. Sort of. Timing the stacks of Razor Coral with the ticks of Inkpot is crucial in order to bolster you on top of the meters. Do take note that currently there is a bug with Razor Coral in Nailota where if you pop it before you are in combat, it doesn't build the stacks correctly, so wait a bit until you get in combat and then pop it. For AoE, you want to keep the Razor Coral, again for the crit, but you will want to replace your ink pot with Torment in a Jar, which is a new trinket that draws from Xanesh in Nailota. This will cause your auto attacks to release an initial small AoE burst of small damage and apply stacks of Unleashed Agony. This buffs the initial AoE damage by 100% and upon reaching 12 stacks it will cause a good chunk of AoE shadow damage to all nearby fools. The Razor Coral can be slightly tricky to using Mythic Plus, you should be putting it on on a high held mob, letting the mob die to automatically trigger your stacks, then reapplying it to another high held mob, because sometimes you are aiming to build crit stacks in one pack to use it on the next. By letting the coral stacks activate when a mob dies, you can immediately put it onto a new mob without waiting for the 20 second cooldown. This method is extremely effective but takes a bit of focus to keep on top of. A very good replacement for Razor Coral if you don't like this playstyle or simply cannot get it is the Economical Jar from Temple of Satralis, which is performing very well for Demo Hunters right now. 
Now for weapons. One of the best one-handers in the game is Bile Stain Croctus that drops from the last boss in Underwrought. And you should have it too. It's so good that the Fellhammer Discord has a separate channel for LFG folks on doing Underwrought runs. A second weapon that is making its way to the top is Unguen Caress that drops from Raden. This will come with a guaranteed Lash of the Void Corruption and as much as this doesn't seem that great when compared to Infinite Stars or Echoing Void, the combination of the weapon stats and this corruption will make it really good. However, if you go above 59 corruption with this, then it's not worth it, so swap it out with anything you have available. We'll get to the best corruptions in a sec, but if you cannot get this to drop, Two Bile Stain Crack Tusks will work wonders too, or diverse follies from Behemoth on Eternal Palace. Alright, time to get into corruption. As far as how much corruption you should have on your Demon Hunter, it's still too early to call, but since this is a beginner guide, you should never get past 59. However, Mythic Havoc Demon Hunters perform great at 90 to 120 corruption, and you can be sure this will be the standard once you progress further into the patch and get more corruption resistance. For now though, stay safe and don't go over 59. When looking at what corruption works best for your Havoc, it's still worth noting we are really early on into the meta, so things might change, but for single target you want Echoing Void as the best one, especially if you are getting higher item level gear because the more health you have, the harder this will hit. Infinite Stars is also a top contender for pure single target damage and it can really surpass Echoing Void if you are still sitting at under 445 item level. Lastly, Gushing Wound can perform amazing in your first stages of playing DH in 8.3, but this only at rank 1, meaning that if you have Echoing Void or Infinite Stars at rank 1, Gushing Wound will outperform both of them. However, once you get the other ones to rank 2 and higher, you can essentially cleanse Gushing Wound. For AoE, the main contenders are Lash of the Void and Twilight Devastation. Lash of the Void is guaranteed on the Unguin Caress weapon from Raden, I mentioned this in the weapon section, and Twilight Devastation, for me at least, works super good in single target also. I mean, truth be told, in many of my Nazot attempts, it was the top dealing damage ability out of all my kit. Echoing Void is another great option for AoE, but again, it really starts to perform once your HP gets close to 400k or above. If you have the Chaotic Transformation trait, your opener will look like this. Pre-pot and immolate 4-5 to five seconds before the pull. Then Fell Rush if you're rushing into the boss. Demon's Bite until you reach 30 Fury. Then Eye Beam, Dead Sweep, Metamorphosis, Dead Sweep again, and then Eye Beam again. Now, with the opener without the Chaotic Transformation, it will change a bit. So, again, you pre-pot and use Immolation Aura and then you metamorphosis directly towards the boss. Then Demon's Bite, Eye Beam, Dead Sweep, and then Annihilation, Chaos Strike if you're not in meta, and then you follow the priority. So regardless of what opener you perform, the same priority will have to be followed through. Eye Beam first, Dead Sweep slash Blade Dance after, Immolation Aura third, Annihilation slash Chaos Strike after, and lastly, fill in with Demon Spite. So, Havoc Demon Hunter, topping the charts as Melly, but you know what? A big shout out has to go to the folks from the Fellhammer Discord channel. The best place for anything Havoc related. And a special thank you to Shade and Serotonin for helping us with the guide. You can find them in the Fellhammer Discord and Serotonin playing on Terran Mill EU, being the GM and raid lead for the Exploit Guild. Shout out to you guys. Also, one of our founding Patreons, Lego, who is a main Mythic Havoc DH and was very helpful with the guide as well. And speaking of Patreons, as always, we have a beautiful Patreon community that supports the making of these videos and we are ever grateful for them being part of the Marcellian Online team. If you're interested in that, links are in the description. Thank you for watching the video. See you soon on the next one.